so there's, there's always a tension in human history between uh, living our lives and then collecting a record of what human beings do. And it's a, a contradiction that I don't think humans can resolve because uh, at a certain point, uh, we began to talk about saving everything. Why did we start talking about it? Because we could. Because at a certain point, the technical possibility seemed there. It, it seemed possible that we could begin to save everything. And it seemed possible that we could begin to save everything without spending a lot of money. Again, why? Because we could. But we didn't really think about what we were saving. You know, there, this, it was non-judgmental. Um, it was the notion that we could save a complete slice of our culture. Now this is a wonderful idea. This has been my own life and my own career. So I think it's a good idea. But on the other hand, it also has a great deal of sort of vanity in it. The notion that we are special, that we have chosen ourselves, that just because it's possible to preserve this, it confers a certain importance upon our lives. You know, we're no more important than people in the 15th century who were able to save much less of their, uh, the, the record of their lives. So what if we can't save it? You know, um, most of humanity has never been recorded. Most of history has never been recorded. It could be that there will be gaps, but I'm not so concerned about gaps and I'm not so concerned about loss because in history, loss is formative. When we think that we don't know about something, when we think that the evidence has disappeared or been destroyed, it makes us work harder to try to find it. And many of the new emerging histories that came, uh, that, that, that people started focusing on in the 20th century, histories of everyday life, histories of working people, histories of, of certain minority and indigenous cultures, um, we, we began uh, digging into those histories precisely because we thought there was very little information. And then we found a lot more. So I think we just have to do the best we can. It's a classic existential dilemma to which there is no solution. Um, we, we can't solve the problem, but we have to keep trying. So many times I've uh, visited archives where the collection is very small but the documentation and metadata is very deep. And you know, this is great. I have to admire the work that the archivists did, but I wish they'd collected more. You know, um, we don't have very much television from the early years. We don't have most of the uh, industrial and educational and advertising films that are so revealing about the various kinds of persuasion uh, to which ordinary people were subjected. We don't have a lot of the um, uh, sort of the uh, what they call para literature, you know, ephemeral literature that doesn't have necessarily artistic value, that isn't made by great authors, but yet is very revealing. This hasn't been saved. And I just wish that more of the everyday life material was saved. Um, we're letting, uh, there's a real question right now about whether physical objects have a right to exist. Physical objects are very difficult for libraries and archives to deal with, and they're getting rid of physical objects very quickly. Some years ago, we got rid of most of the newspapers. We uh, photographed them on microfilm and threw away the original newspapers. We're doing this now with books as they get scanned. Most duplicate copies of books are disappearing. We're doing it with videotape because you can digitize videotape and oversample. Soon we'll begin to do it with film and other materials that are unique. And it's a great problem. We have to decide what role physical objects will play because there's this history of throwing away something old in favor of something new and then having problems with something new.